So we're here in Australia after the after the Las Vegas shooting decided to, you know, basically shit on the United States for their lack of gun rights. Now, it always it always amazes me during these issues that we don't ever look on ourselves to see what it is we could do better as a, as a society and as a country. Because believe it or not, we're not perfect. And that goes for any country. No country is perfect. There can always be improvements that are made. So this is... So my my thing is, well, I, you know, I, I was really interested after the gun, after all, after all this, and obviously, you know, in the States, it's, there's the, there's the legendary NRA that has all this political control, and, you know, they pour all this money into, into camp, into uh, specifically Republican campaigns, and obviously some corporate Democrats. So this then begs the question is, how powerful is our gun lobby? And do we have a significant gun lobby? And I think the answer to that is, is that, whilst they're not um, massive players, they're still there. I mean, in the 2015 to 2016 financial year, firearms groups contributed $353,000, Australian dollars, obviously, um, to political parties. So these guys are very much out there. Now, what was, now why, now the reason why I point out that particular year was because it was that, it was that, um, it was that financial year where there was, <clears throat> where there was talks about gun regulations including a particular type of shotgun being regulated and other things as well. So that was just a particular year where there was, um, where gun, where, um, where gun regulation just so happened to be on the board. And the firearms group responded by pouring in a lot of money before the votes took place. You know, it's, um, I, it's funny. I recently read, um, someone in a super veiled way. It wasn't, it wasn't a direct question. It was a, it was a very, very, very mild veiled a uh, question to uh, Bill Shorten, who's obviously the leader of the um, leader of the uh, of the Labour Party, and basically, in a totally veiled way, said, um, "Is there any particular reason uh, why you think that the firearms group have given you um, the amount of money that they gave them?" And then, to paraphrase, he's basically like, "Me, an honourable politician, their vote being influenced by money in politics." How, how absurd, how absolutely absurd. How, is, is that really the question you're asking me? Now, this guy obviously completely backed down because he's part of the establishment media and, you know, act, you know the culture of access and whatnot. Um, my response would have been, you're goddamn right I am. Like, why else do you think that these interest groups give money to politicians? Like, do you think they're doing it out of the kindness of their hearts? Do you think when a bank gives $100,000 to... Labour or the coalition, they're normally, normally about the same. Like, are they just giving it because, oh golly gee, we have a spare $100,000 in our pocket, let's just throw it at political parties? Of course you don't believe that, would be, that's totally absurd. Because the thing is, you got to remember that these are immoral machines. These are corporations. And literally the purpose of a corporation is to maximise profit. And then, you know, obviously, um, and then also being able to maintain um, the number of consumers. So, but this idea that somehow that there wouldn't be some sort of ulterior motive for a a corporation to give money to a political party. Are you insane? (laughs) Like, again, I I ask the question genuinely, why else do you think that the mining industry, the banking industry, the pharmaceutical industry, like, why do you honestly believe that they're giving money to political groups, to political parties? Why do you think this? Um, the other thing that always amuses me about this is like, so, you know, we'll talk, we'll talk about that. And then people will turn around and go, do you want, I, I presume you don't want the union money out. Yeah, get it all out. Get all the money out. I don't care. I don't care if it's from a union. I don't care if it's from a corporation. Get all the money out and let's, let's publicly finance elections. And the amazing thing is, right, that's it's a bit of a, a bit of a balance sheet here. So you've got, on the one hand, we have one of the most lax political donation systems in the world, which is incredible. And we're also one of the only countries that allow, allow foreign donations, which which amazes me that politicians have already come and said, well, foreign donations could influence us. And then you ask them about uh, domestic donations. They're like, no, no, you think A and Z influence my influence, our party's vote and our platform? You're goddamn right, I do. <clears throat> now, look, the reason why I bring this up for Australian context is one, as I've just explained, there was some intent here. They didn't just pour all this money out for the fun of it. They poured it out because, you know, they wanted a they wanted a bit of a sound gun regulations. Now, I think that there's um, 
it's only a certain now the, the guns thing is a little bit different to i think everything else because we have such a strong um culture in australia where we're not afraid of everything and we don't feel like we need a gun and we understand the implications of having lots of guns so no one would be overly successful on a pro on a pro gun platform as we have seen with minor parties that still to this day run on pro gun platforms it does not work um so look it shows intent and the other thing is as well is that look we need to be we need to be aware of this presence in order to fight against it. Because if we don't know if it exists, we, we can't do anything about it. So now that you know that these pro-gun lobbies are, are out and about, at least you're aware of it. So at least you're not blindsided when the shooters party, which are no really small minor party, but still, you know, when they come out and they're like, well, you know, I wonder where we get all our money from. Yeah, it be, it's a gun lobby. It's all good. Look, here's, here's the thing. The more that we're aware of this, um, the more that we're aware of um, how our why why are why are why parties vote a certain way. If you want if you understand where their revenue is coming from, then you can have some sort of idea of which direction they're going to go in. That is enough about money and politics for today. Kind of mostly, probably mention it in the next story as well. Um, but look, it's just it's just a friendly reminder. The more that we're aware of how our political parties are getting their revenue the more you can understand why they vote. Like, you wonder why Labour and... why the why Labour and the Coalition are so similar? Like, I mean, if you're not a loyalist, you get that. Why do you think they're not that different? Because donors hedge their bets. They have the same... they have the same donors, roughly the same amounts, depending on which industry. So, and as I say, don't take my word for it, do your own research. And if you get a chance, um, go and find what is known in, uh, was known in certain circles as the Princeton study. So if you can find the Princeton study, which um, analyzed how much influence uh, normal people have um, as opposed to uh, corporate interests. Yes, it's based on America, but it does give you the, the idea that, oh shit, this could potentially be a problem in other places where we have uh, similar lax political donation laws. So I would recommend you go check that out.